what do you kind of think are the new narratives if we negate the existing ones where would you start looking for new ones I don't think we need brand new narratives um, I'm kind of into old narratives <laughs> and um, I, uh, I, well, I, the, where I'm coming from is, 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 is looking where in the real world you see the, 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 the communities that have most successfully resisted this logic of the, 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 the gated community. Um, and, 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 and they, they are communities with a, with a different story to tell and, and an older story to tell. And, and to, to me, the, 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 this Judeo-Christian religious narrative of um, apocalyptic uh, uh, um, destruction, cleansing the earth, and allowing a start over. I mean, I think the idea of the start over is probably the most persistent uh, story and, and actually the most dangerous story of of our time and it, it, it's the narrative of colonialism it's like mm -hmm. let's just get out of our country and just go to somebody else's country and start fresh and just mm -hmm. take land and and empty land mm -hmm. uh, and of course no lands are empty and then we can make a big mess of that land um, we can invoke God to, to rationalize it and we and we can start over and and so if we go to a pre judeo-christian narrative um, in, in most creation myths, you, you have a cyclical uh, re relationship with the earth. Um, you actually don't get to escape. There's no boat that comes to take you and your friends away and start over on some new piece of land. And there's, you're not going to be airlifted to the sky um, when things get really bad and all your enemies won't be destroyed. You actually have to live with the consequences of your action. Uh, and there is no great escape. Um, and, and, and so that's a very old narrative, uh, may, maybe the oldest, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and it, I think probably all of us can trace it back and, and refine that narrative, um, and it has the advantage of being true. We actually do have to live with the messes we make, um, and uh, and that the idea that the the Earth's resources aren't limitless, uh, and and. Um, and uh, it's a cycle, and we live with the effects of, of what we do, would seem to me to be a much more uh, life-affirming narrative than, than, than the one that we constantly reenact, both you know, with wars, resource wars, um, in a response to climate change, and even in our popular culture, like the whole narrative of reality television of just like, we're throwing out your old life and making a brand new you. I mean, this is this is the American dream, the, the idea of the start over. Forget mm -hmm. the old you, you're brand new, mm -hmm. um, and everything about you can change, and, and you can have no past. Uh, and um, I think the idea of being ahistorical is, is you know, it's, it's the most damaging narrative. Mm -hmm. And do you think that, I mean, even though everything, the answer is within us in a way, I mean, uh, in terms of, of where to find this narrative, I mean, that we can all relate to or we, cannot, we can all uh, trace it back. Are we very separated now from that? Or is there, or, or, or are we even less than what we think? Well, I think we are. We are literally separated mm -hmm. from it because so many of us move. We're, you know, we're mobile people, yeah. most of us, mm -hmm. and becoming more mobile. I mean, mass migration is one of the, you know, is the major effect of all of the cr simultaneous crises that society is mm -hmm. facing right now. I mean, whether it's a free trade deal in Mexico that creates mass displacement of people who come looking for work in the United States, or a hurricane that pushes people off their land, or uh, biofuels that pushes people mm -hmm. off their land. Um, people are moving in massive numbers. Um, internally, in, in, in countries like China, where uh, you have 120 uh, million people who are part of the so-called floating workforce, who, who have been uh, moved from their villages. In many cases, their villages don't exist anymore. And they're traveling looking for work. And then you have the moving not just from countryside to city, but from country to country. And so I think what connects us to mm -hmm. those stories is, is usually place, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
that we have a story about where we live, and, and that story is woven into, um, it, 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 into our relationship to place. And that's the importance of, of roots. It's also something that I always find striking in my research that rooted people are the biggest threat mm -hmm. to, uh, to capitalism. Uh, and you know, in, even in the research I did like, for my first book, No Logo, it was really interesting, even internally, I, was re I spent some time in an export processing zone in the Philippines. And that export processing zone had a policy, it was in the province of Cavite, not to hire workers from Cavite. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they pathologized, they said, you know, I interviewed the head of the zone and I remember him saying, oh well, the, the workers in, Cav people in Cavite have like, the wrong attitude. But it wasn't that, it's that the people in Cavite have roots. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the people in Cavite have stories about Cavite. And so it was better to hire mobile mm -hmm. people from anywhere in the world who would be on their own. Yeah. And, would, and so I think the great, our, our great challenge is accepting this is our reality. Not everyone is mobile, but, but many of us are.